That's okay, it. Yeah. I've got to go. Thank you very much. Yes, Parallel now, Line then. will be on BBC One next Saturday at 9 o'clock while we're all lying in. But now, Leslie, hello. Good morning, good morning. I've good come morning. over here for a girly moment, actually. <laughs> Chat having a nice little phone. chat now before we go straight to the phones yeah. I just wanted to ask you because I think it's a real inspiration for budding actors and actresses your great story that I read about when you <laughs> lied about your height could you tell me tell us all well about I'm it. actually very small as most people the first thing they say to me is oh aren't you tiny and uh, I went it was a, it was a West End audition for Bordello which is a musical and they had to go on and say my name and say my height so I went on and said uh, Leslie Joseph five foot seven <laughs> and uh, they sort of accepted that. And then I had a recall, and half an hour later I went back and I had to go on and say my name and height. And I said, Leslie Joseph, five foot two, which <laughs> is my actual height. So uh, they said, this is interesting, Leslie, you appear to have lost five inches within the last half an hour. <laughs> and I went, I said, no, no, actually, I'm about five foot five, but I tend to go up or down according to the height, according to the job. <laughs> there you are, blew the punchline. <laughs> but uh, no, it's the first, everybody says, as Dorian, I look very tall. And I don't know why, because I am tiny and she I'm much smaller. She does wear quite high heels. Though, well, she does, she? but I'm only five foot two. And for some reason, I look very tall as Dorian. Well, I think I'm that's not, great tiny. inspiration for actors and actresses that, you know, just to try. That you can make it, you even if you're small. No, and you can lie about your height and things like that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and get away with it. Let's go straight to the phones. All right. See. Hello, line one. Who's there? Hi, it's Erin Purcell from Gwent. Hello. Hi, hello. you're through to Leslie. What's your question? Um, I just want to know what attracted Leslie to the role of Dorian. Oh. Ah, well, I have to say Dorian was written for me because I did a wonderful West End play called Exclusive Yarns and the writers came to see it, Maurice Grant and Lawrence Marks, and I played a very outrageous lady who ran a wool shop in Primrose Hill with hair out to here and Diamante earrings that she wore at 11 o'clock in the morning. And I walked and entered in uh, through bead curtains and they thought <laughs> my goodness that would be wonderful to set that character against Pauline and Linda that they were doing a series for anyway uh, set in Chigwell so they wrote two episodes sent them to me and said do you like this character and I read it and thought this is going to change my life and it did so it was sort of written for me really yeah but the clothes weren't the clothes a bit of a pull as well the whole sort of outfit the, the whole, whole thing. thing it just seemed right it just smelled yeah. right and I just thought it was going to be the thing that would change my life and the clothes are wonderful they're lovely and glamorous and I buy them all afterwards do you really yes I do Oh, brilliant. I do. I choose them very carefully <laughs> so I know I can take them home and wear them in real life. Oh, excellent. Well, thanks for your call, Aaron. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Let's take a question from Alex. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You get straight in terrified. No, some of them are absolutely terrified. The younger ones seem to be terrified. I can't imagine why, as if I had some sort of reputation. But no, when they get to know me, they know I'm really a pussycat. The I'm members of Take That aren't afraid of you. You're not afraid of me, Take That, are you? Take That, are you afraid of Leslie? They're all famous. that. They're all Gary. hiding in cupboards. Gary, are you afraid of Leslie? Yeah. Of Leslie? Yeah. No, not at all. No. <laughs> No, you see? <laughs> well, they're pussycat. <laughs> Let's get back to the phones. Hello, line two, who's there? Hi, this is Karen Baker from Chinkford. Hello. Hi, Karen. Hi. What's your question? Um, my question for Leslie is, do you have any memorable moments from recording the last series of Birds of a Feather? Uh, well, I have to say, one of the most... Well, it's not a moment, it's a whole ten days, actually. Our most memorable time was Los Angeles, where we filmed the Christmas special, oh, yes. where we had the most wonderful time. I'd never been, and we had ten whole days. Flew out, filmed for eight days, and had two days uh, looking around and doing all the sights. And we went to Universal Studios. Linda Robson and I went on the Back to the Future ride. I've never been so frightened <laughs> in my life. I spent the whole time thinking, thanking God I'd had children, because I was going... <sighs> <laughs> like this the whole time. I think I saw 10 seconds of it and I watched like this and I, I turned into something out of the exorcist. I was going, Linda, Linda, I want to get off. <laughs> I mean, it is the most frightening ride you will ever go on in your life. But we loved Los Angeles in Venice Beach where they have all the muscle builders. Ooh, yes. so the whole of our 10 days there, I have to say that in five years, we've never done anything quite so exciting. And it's a very birds. glamorous location, isn't it, really? Very it's glamorous. Different. And we just had a wonderful time. The American crew was great. And I think, I don't know who saw the Christmas episode. I did. But it was a good yeah, one, yeah, girls, wasn't it? Did yeah, you like yeah. it? It was an excellent so one. So that, uh, that was my most memorable ten days of the series. Thanks for your question, Karen. Thanks. Can I? Y yes, oh, hello. hello. Oh, no, she's gone. She's gone. Um, right, let's take a question from Charlotte. Do, do Sharon Tracy's husbands get out of prison in the next series? Ooh, well, they want to know that. Yes, I know. Well, um, I think when they do, it's probably the end of the series, so we hope that they don't yet. We're recording uh, series six at the moment, and they're still inside. They got sent down for 12 years, so I think with parole, they've got it's worked it all out, down to right. the day, practically, to know how long I'm in work. Um, <laughs> 12 years, so they'll probably come out after eight. So there's another two after this yet. But even then, when they come out, you could have lots of funny moments finding out if they get on again, if, if down 
Darren, or Darren whether Dorian Tracy goes, goes, goes off with Dar- one of Yes, what Dorian does happen. with Chris. Or, so, mm. no, they don't come out yet, and they certainly don't come out in the series we're doing at the moment. But it's good to know there will be more series, though, won't there? Well, I hope so, yes. Oh, I'm sure there will be. Let's go straight back onto the phones. Hello, line three, who's there? Hello, it's Michelle Ralph from Catron. Hello. Hi, Michelle, what's your question? Um, who would you both like to go to dinner with? Oh. Oh, well, you know who I find absolutely fascinating is Ken Livingstone. Only, I don't know why, but I find him an absolutely extraordinary character both to talk to. I've met him, I've done a few quiz shows with him. Oh. And uh, I think I'd love to spend an evening with Ken Livingstone. Do you know who he is? Do you know Ken Livingstone? Do you know who he is? He's a Labour politician. Oh. Does he mean anything to you? <laughs> you thought I was going to say Kevin Costner or somebody like that, didn't you? Who would you like, yeah. to, have, who would you like to have dinner with? Mark Owen. Mark, oh, well, can I say, second to Ken Livingstone, the whole of Take That. <laughs> All right. Thanks for your call, Michelle. Let's take a quick question from Joanne. Joanne. Uh, if a character like Dory moved in next door, how would you feel? Oh, <laughs> sick as a parrot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I could cope with it at all. I really don't. I don't know how anybody copes with somebody like Dory living next door, but I gather Chigwell is full of them. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I think I'd move, is the answer to that, I think. Would you really? Yes, I think I'd move, because I think she's a nightmare. It would be a nightmare having somebody pop yes, in like that. Yes, like myself. Lovable though there. she is. It lovable would be though she is. Lovable and vulnerable and wonderful. I think I would have to move. So that's the answer to that. Well, Leslie, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you. And being such a great guest. It's been a real laugh to have you in. And stay throughout the morning, won't you? I will, I will, I will. Not now, anywhere. we are going to be finding out how, who wins those grimy dogs. Francis, can you... Oh! Talking oh. of which... Ow! <laughs> Oh, just caught there. Thank you, Francis. Oh, Who won those <laughs> any minute now? But first, take a look at the dog himself in action, because here is Grimmy in a cartoon adventure. <laughs>